Okay, so I built a prison and it has guards because, you know, prisons have those. I was gonna demonstrate the guards' roles with my friends, but I, I don't have those. So I'm just gonna wear different colored leather armor and we're just gonna pretend that I'm different people. Oh, but Canadian, I don't really want to know how to run your Minecraft prison. Well, that's funny because I've traveled hundreds and thousands of blocks all across the Minecraft world getting all these Elder Guardians together and I still wasn't able to find who asked you. So how do you run the most humane prison in Minecraft, the Citadel? I'm just gonna call it the Citadel because I don't really like the Elias part. This prison has a staff of 33 guards, and I know that sounds like a ton. I'm expecting the typical guard position that will have someone online 24 hours to have three guards take that position at eight hour shifts. So that's the first kind of guard. There will be three that run the one position, each at eight hour shifts. The second kind of guard is one that can come on at any time, but almost never has to be. There will only be two guards to the shift, and all they have to do is be available to come online in case something comes up. So there are some spaces where guards won't be online, but they always can be. And the third kind of guard is one that only shows up for specific events pre-planned by the prison, like the entrance process for a visitor. But typically you only have nine or so guards online. Which actually isn't crazy, because remember, the Citadel can hold eight prisoners. So that's actually a pretty close balance. Now let's talk about the third type of guards first, just because there's only two of them and they're very simple. First guy only comes online every so often, just to check and make sure that nothing's being built around the prison. He also has the opportunity to do repairs if somebody's griefed it on the outside, but mainly he's there to make sure no one's building anything suspicious. Not that that can do much against this prison, but it's kind of unpolished. Obviously, the other type three guard is the guy who comes during visitor entrance process. His job is to go into the first airlock with the prisoner, press F3, and then call it a day. This is probably the laziest guard role. In fact, we don't even pay him. Now, the second type of guard. This guard can come on at any time. The two guards that fill this role take shifts of when they're the one who's supposed to log on if needed. They are supposed to log on for the entrance process. The first guy chills at the very bottom of the nether. I know he was never mentioned in the original video, but he's still important. His protocol is to make sure that no one's actually building anything during the entrance process. Obviously, the guard above can detect it, but he can't do anything about it physically because there's no way to get down. When the entrance process isn't happening, it's the job of one of the other guards in the nether to tell this guy to log on in case something's being built. Sometimes, people who I will not name come along and try to build these little TNT minecarts to send to our trap portals, which by the way don't work because our trap portals actually relight themselves when blown up. Let me note also that while you may argue that it would be pretty simple to, um, to build portals and send TNT minecarts through them, because keep in mind you would have to light all the TNT minecarts at the same time in order to disable every portal. It is a lot easier to sabotage a portal than to build one. Regardless, we really don't want people building in the nether. It makes it harder to start visiting processes. The other guard of category two is a guard that spawns on the roof. If the guards notice someone is spam reconnecting and disconnecting over and over, he will just log onto the roof, press F3 and look around. If there are no entities, then the disconnecting wasn't somebody trying to get on the roof. If it was, he'll do his best to kill them. If he can't, we'll get into that whole security later. So let's talk about the guards that are always online. First, of course, there's the two nether guards. There's one up by the portal and one down where the entrance is. On a typical day, his job is to notify the lower guard if something's being built below the nether. He's supposed to stop people from coming in and attacking on the top of the nether. He can also log in reserve guards who aren't on shift in case he needs help. And he'll be using his very special F3 trick to make sure nobody's sneaking up on the prison in order to log on and off or whatever. His job during the entrance process is pretty much covered in the original video, as well as the top guy's job during the entrance process. Oh, and since this is a handbook, I guess I should explain what he does. When the guard and the escort are standing up in the cobweb area, you press F3, you check how many entities that there are. If there are too many entities, look this lever, trap them in place, you go out, try to figure out where the entities are. If they're inside the cobwebs, you remove them. Feel free to get the help of reserved guards if needed. If there are no extra entities, you flick that lever anyway to hold them in place. Make sure to replace the cobwebs before every entrance process. Press this to open the airlock, this one to close it, this one to open it, this one to close it. Make sure your escort guy sees the right number of entities, and feel free to totally spam the guy with harming potions if he decides to put on prop for armor. Additionally, during off hours, it's also this guard's job to refill the harming potion container up here as well as the glowstone refill. Now this lower guard is giving custody to the higher up guard. A prisoner or visitor should stand in this block and be trapped in place using this first lever labeled 
one. He will request that this visitor stay uncrouched so that he can see the name tag is in the correct position. But if this visitor refuses, he can always crawl through these iron bars and see for himself. Now before he flicks this lever to send this guy into the portal, he must get on call with the first guard in the control room. After everyone in the nether has done all their dark F3 magic like I've explained, the nether guard and the overworld guard will count down and do two things at the exact same time. Note that it's the control guard and the overworld that will do the counting down, because technically he has to be a little early. The overworld guard will toggle the portal lock, at the same time the guard at the top of the nether flicks the second lever, shoving the guy into the portal. Now it takes a little bit to go to the nether portal, which is one of the functions that the lock serves. It's sort of like a scuffed timer. The control guard can listen to the sounds of pistons retracting three times, and once he's heard all three, that's probably a good indication that the guy is about to enter the nether. So he'll flick open the portal immediately after that, and immediately disable it when the prisoner or visitor enters. Now what if they don't? What if a visitor disconnects midway through the run? Well first of all, if some guy disconnects and never reconnects, they will be permanently banned from visiting. And second, they will put the prison into visiting lockdown. And now, during a visitor lockdown, basically that means that no one is allowed to visit the prison. I know that sounds pretty sad, like, oh, come on, how can it be fair if you can just disable visiting? But, like, come on, think about it. Other prisons permanently ban every single person inside the prison if something breaching security happens. In this case, I am temporarily withholding the opportunity of some people to visit the prison. The only way to get out of a visitor lockdown is to confirm that this visitor is outside the prison and has a new set spawn. However you confirm that, I don't care, but he must have irrefutable evidence that he is outside the prison with a new set spawn. Anyways, now we're in the overworld. The visitor goes up the elevator. When he gets to the top, control guard hits the note block to open the elevator. When they get through the elevator, he flicks this one to close it. These controls right here open and close the prisoner gates. If you're sending a prisoner through there, note that before the prisoner even enters the overworld, the guard in charge of making sure that no one is breaking any blocks will do one routine check just before the entrance process and then come down here in order to follow the prisoner along their overworld path to their first bed. You can hit this note block to expose the bed and hit this note block to kill them. Make sure to reset everything when you're done. If the prisoner chooses to bed fake at this point, they'll actually just respawn back at the respawn anchor. So by default, the prisoner will respawn in the special housing unit. After an hour has passed, the control guard can deactivate specialized respawn for um, any prisoners who have just joined. And as the sign says, up sends them to the special housing unit or the build room, which we'll get to, and down will send them to their regular cell. If the lever is down and the light is up, the prisoner will respawn in their normal cell. Now consider the visitor entrance process, which will take place on the south gate rather than the north. This process must take place at night, while the prisoner process must take place during the day. This is because we don't want prisoners sleeping in beds, but we do need the visitor to sleep in beds. First, before the gate is opened, a guard will take a bed out of the hopper. We'll explain how that gets there come through here and replace it back on these hovers. After this point, the visitor and their escort can both enter through this gate as we open it. Once they enter, the visitor will be instructed to sleep in their bed to set their spawn. You will be able to confirm that they've set their respawn because they will actually sleep in the bed and respawn here. After this point, a note block will be hit to pull this piston in front of them and remove that one so that they fall into lava. That will be this control. Now, before you tell the visitor to stand on that block and get themselves killed by pressing this note block, first they must be warned of something very vital. As soon as they press the respawn button, they will step on this pressure plate, which will, in three ticks, send a pulse over to this piston, which will destroy the bed, dropping it in the hoppers and replacing the bed in this hopper right here where we found it. As soon as they respawn, they will be inside lava and must swim up to be able to right click this white bed. If they don't right click the white bed in time, they will die in this lava pit and be permanently banned from visiting ever again. There are reasons for this, but I won't explain them because people might try to exploit them. As soon as the visitor respawns, they can swim up, right click the bed, and they will respawn in this room which has water. From the water room, they can swim up to this tunnel and stand on this ledge and then drop down safely into the visitor room using that very tiny water puddle. From this point, it is the visitor guard that now has custody over the visitor. The visitor guard will actually spend most of his time in the cafeteria and he will be very regularly handing out food 
probably mostly cake because it's easy to eat quickly to all the prisoners. If a prisoner would like to make a request to visit the visitor, which is a little backwards, this guard will ask for the visitor's consent to let this inmate in. If the visitor approves, the visitor guard will use this airlock door to allow one inmate, who has already been given consent to enter, uh, to, to enter the visiting room. When visiting is over, it is pretty easy to either shoot the visitor or pearl in and kill the visitor from here. If the visitor never leaves the room up here, uh, you know, I mean, you know, that, like, there's no hiding. Also, the routine guard on his half-hour checks of everywhere in the prison will come by here to check if a visitor is through here. Speaking of the routine guard, remember there is one guard who will routinely travel to every place in the entire prison to make sure that no one is breaking any blocks. And trust me, there are not places to hide. He will check every cell, every floor, every crevice, every half an hour to make sure no one is breaking anything. And while I haven't timed it myself exactly, I do estimate, because I'm the one who physically built the inside of this prison, that it would probably take less than five minutes to check every area of the prison that prisoners can enter. The next kind of guard is one who can take requests to go to the build room. He will sit in this office, and any prisoner who is trustworthy enough and hasn't gone to the special housing unit in a very long time can get the special privilege of entering the build room. If he receives this guard's approval, this guard will notify the control guard. The control guard will pull the lever in this room that changes their specialized respawn from on to off. Now, like I mentioned before, they will now go to either solitary confinement or the build room. In this case, it's the build room because, as, as figures, this guard will also notify one guard up here who will also change the spawn point from special housing to the build room. This is why you want to trust this prisoner because you are changing their specialized respawn to a build room instead of an inescapable cobblestone generator. In the build room, prisoners will respawn and drop down to this area where they can be given anything from dirt to wool to slime blocks and honey blocks, although everything that they build must be removed when they're done. And yes, these prisoners are totally permitted to share time with other prisoners in this room. You could have the entire prison in this room as long as there's a guard monitoring them and he destroys everything that they build after they leave. To send them back, obviously their two respawn levers will be reset and they'll be killed and sent back to the normal cell. There's a second guard who works on this floor in the mail office. He will actually not spend most of his time in the prison, but rather outside at some mail station somewhere. Now, how you build a mail station, I have no idea. I'm a prison maker. But objectively, his job is to collect mail from outside people that is directed to particular prisoners. When he makes a request, the build room guard, who usually spends his time here, will come by and flick a lever, sending the mail guard back to this point. The mail guard can store items in the storage for each prisoner, and the routine guard can call them down to the mail office up to this point to receive their mail one at a time, again through an airlock. Obviously, they will verify to make sure only one person is in the airlock before they start giving away mail. So now, a part I'm sure a ton of people were waiting for. What is on the contraband list? What are you not allowed to give to the mailman for him to give to prisoners? Well, first of all, obviously everything mentioned in the original video. No blatant escape items like pearls, boats, whatever. Obviously no potions, no enchants, no XP bottles. It has the purple glowing shiny effect. It's banned. So is any single item in the entire game that alone can be crafted into a block. This includes all ores. Emeralds can be crafted into a block. Emeralds are banned. Snow can be crafted into a block. Honeycomb, bricks, nether bricks, prismarine. Also, anything, period, that can be placed. So yes, this includes cake, this includes string, this includes slime blocks. Any tool is banned and any weapon that can do more damage than a wooden sword is banned. This includes crossbows and bows. Any books that come through must be signed. No loan books and no written books. Obviously we can't risk getting ourselves chunk banned. If anyone would like to request a written down contraband list, I'd be happy to, although if no one cares, I'm not going to bother right now. That's basically the whole list. 
Now there's one final section of the prison, housing the last two guards that haven't been mentioned yet. These are the four upper guard rooms, including the actual special housing unit itself. The first guard, the housing guard, will be assigned to this bottom floor, where he will be in charge of opening this gate to allow people to come up and down through the upper guard rooms. By default, this will remain closed. The housing guard may have the option to place Crying Obsidian to block this from being pressed again, meaning that there's no easy way for anyone to get down. This guard is also exactly the guard who is in charge of coming to the special housing unit and checking up on members here. This is the player who uses a bow and arrow to kill prisoners in these sections to get them out of the unit and also maybe punish them a bit more. If they refuse to die because, say, they're jumping and you can't shoot them, then, you know, just forget about it. Their problem. This guard may also have the option to disable some of the cobblestone generators simply for the sake of de lagging the server. If no prisoner even occupies one of these spaces, say B3 for example, then it is always possible to completely disable the generator just so it's slightly less laggy if that becomes an issue. We try to reduce the amount of lag that this prison produces to uh, more benefit your Minecraft survival server. Now, if you're still stuck up on that whole issue of blocking off guards from entering this area completely, let me show you what the final guard in this section does. In the very top room, this room houses every single guard's respawn point, every single guard's stasis chamber, all the emergency guard resources, and the alarm system, including the note block part. This is also where all guards will pearl up to attack intruders coming from above. The guard up here is objectively the warden. It is this guard's job on lockdown to pull levers to send guards from down below up to here to start fighting. Now, I've placed carpets over where the levers are so that it's very hard to hit them on accident when right-clicking an anvil or a crafting table, but because of the anvil, there's still enough space to right click any one of these levers. If the alarm's been going on for a while and a threat has been neutralized or whatever, there's this button which gives you an easy option to deactivate the alarm because it's kind of loud and annoying. So that's there in case you were wondering. Now suppose a lockdown activates. The first thing that's going to happen is every guard down below is going to try and send everyone else to the special housing unit by activating all the levers to disable a normal respawn and then killing them all. The routine guard will stay down below and make sure that no one logs on and starts breaking things. Everyone else will be sent up here via their stasis chambers, or if they manage to get up before that stage of lockdown happens, then they can just come up here and their stasis chamber doesn't need to be activated. Regardless, everyone who comes up here will set a new stasis chamber in one of these pods. To stop someone from mining from above, first of all realize that it will take between 6 and 18 minutes depending on their strategy to mine a single block. The next stage of lockdown is obviously to have guards start pearling up and trying to identify the location of the player mining down. Now at the very beginning phase, obviously it's impossible to get through the first layer of Crying Obsidian, so it should be easy to pearl into this room and kill them from here. If something inconvenient happened, maybe the um, alarm somehow didn't activate and this guard who was on patrol didn't tell anyone that he got killed and they had to wait for the next guard to come online and realize that there was a hole and someone was mining down, then that's still totally fine. If someone's mining, simply have people come up with pearls, enable subtitles, listen for the sound of the block breaking sound effect, and look around to see where the arrows are pointing to see which direction to go. They can also use F3 and Optifine Zoom or lowering the FOV in vanilla Minecraft to find where entities are located. It really does not take that long to figure out which direction someone is mining from, and as soon as they've determined a general direction, they can be teleported back down, and the escapist coordinates can be triangulated until the point where they have non-stop guards purling up to them and trying to kill them. I'm not going to explain all the logistics of why this doesn't work. If you want to try escaping it, you can try for yourself and see how poorly that escape method will work. Well, that's not to say it won't with a bit of ingenuity. I suppose that's practically everything you'd need to know to start running the Citadel. Minecraft's most humane, most friendly, most attractive, and possibly most inescapable prison. But anyways, to all professional and aspiring escapists out there, I wish you all good luck, and goodbye.